He's been off the bike for three months. He's been back for a week. Do I have a chance at keeping up? <laughs> Last year, I got an email from a kid named Adam who lives in Africa who wanted me to come and ride his home trails. Sometimes someone puts together an email that really knocks my socks off, that really conveys the message, has a video attached, and really gets me fired up about going to this place. Yeah, nice little skids. Here's the bridge that I made. It's looking good. So that email was in January. By December, we worked out a total plan for me to come in, ride Kijabi, and I did. We did five days, I think, of really great riding, old walking paths, just some really, really Thank great you. riding, great adventure, eye-opening culture, the, the total package. We'll see why I took Adam's invite. <laughs> I, saw him, try that one more time. I saw him doing a bunch of goofy jibs and flip-flops. So I know I could trust that he's a pretty good rider. Right, <laughs> so I really treasured my time riding with Adam out in Kijabi. It was it was fantastic. And once a year, Adam's family actually comes back from Kijabi to Southern California to fundraise for their mission. Basically, them being in Africa is a mission for them, and they need to fundraise to be able to pay their own salaries to be out there. This year, the timing was not gonna work out for me to actually be able to ride with Adam. I was somewhere, he's coming here, it's a limited time, he's gotta go back to Africa. But then I saw this Instagram post. I follow a bunch of mountain bikers on Instagram and seeing this kind of photo is not that rare, but uh, there was something about it that was a little more haunting. Usually, the dudes are in their smock and they've got their thumbs up and you can see that there's some kind of broken bone or something going on, but uh, with Adam, not so much. And then you read the caption, and it's like, my heart is failing. Lead the way, nature boy. You gotta change your Instagram uh, profile. It says nature boy on pause. It started out about six months ago, maybe a little less than that. Uh, everyone at school got sick, and so, I was, I was like the unlucky one who never really got better. Yeah, like and yeah, still feeling slow. Yeah, something about that really just kicked off the uh, disease. <laughs> we came back not because of my sickness. We came back. It was school vacation, six weeks. Yes. I didn't say goodbye to any of my friends because wow. I was kind of mad at them. Oh no! So it's like. <laughs> It's like that's tragic. But, yeah, when you get there, you're like, uh, I was like, guys, I'm not gonna say goodbye to you because I'll see you in six weeks. Yeah, and then I won't be mad at you. Yeah, and so and everyone was sort of the same way. <laughs> oh, oh. oh man! <laughs> yeah, that buddy. Was sick. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That was some of the best riding I've ever done since I've been Hell yeah. I was getting out of breath walking around the house, and I was, um, I was waking up not being able to breathe in the middle wow. of the night. Which, that, my dad tells me, is a telltale sign of heart failure. So you did this ride like two days before you went to the hospital? Four. Four days. <laughs> and things were not feeling right. Yeah, and on the same day, we also, like, we got home took a shower, got in the car, went to the beach, and boogie boarded for four hours. Yeah, <laughs> but that's normal for you. Yeah, no, I totally could have done that. So I'm getting out of breath, walking around the house, and finally Dad's like, I want to go for a bike ride. And they're like, but you're getting out of breath when you're walking around the house. And I said, no, I think, I think it's okay. I'm really bored. I just want to go for a ride. So instead of that, I ended up, that was the beginning of my medical experience. Adam's got a ton of air in his tires, too. So he's running sketch. <laughs> oh yeah. I was just thinking I'm gonna go back to Kajabi in January. I'm gonna rest, gonna watch a lot of Netflix. Uh, you know, just try to sort of take a step back and just re reassess and be ready for yeah. 
Kajabi in January. Exactly. And then I take a genetic test just as like a, oh, maybe we should take this just in case. Yeah. And it turns out I have a genetic disorder, and that does not get better. Yeah. So the, should I say this? Yeah, of course. The, yeah. Okay, so the projected thing is that I'm going to get better and continue getting better the way I am right now. Um, and I'm able to ride my bike and all yeah. that until suddenly no one knows how long it's going to take. I'm just going to get worse and then I'm going to need a heart transplant. Yeah. And so that, you know, I sort of say that like a little lackadaisically, I guess, but it's a big it's the deal. reality, right? Yeah. It's the and reality. I've really been thinking like there's a lot of implications that come with that, you know, life expectancy yeah. and all that. And it's really just, that's what's, that's what's happening right that's now. That's the fact. <laughs> that was crazy. So the limit now is you got to keep your heart rate low. Yeah. You can't put too much stress. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were even talking, you can't do push-ups or pull-ups. Yeah. So raises your blood pressure yeah, too so much. So things that use a lot of muscle groups at a time. Like I was pushing something and I got a little dizzy from that or if I do a push-up, first of all, I'm weak from not doing push-ups, but if I manage to do it, then I stand up, I have to really sit down and yeah. it's because of the medicines that I'm taking. Okay. That wasn't the steep part, this is the steep part. <laughs> We're getting to it. Oh yeah. <laughs> so it was three months off the bike. You've only been riding your bike for a week. A week, now, just about, yeah. And the bike is your life. It's it, your identity, it's right? It's a big deal, yeah. It sure is. About a month and a half ago, I really, I was sort of thinking like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm not allowed to ride my bike. And so I was talking to one of my friends. Um, he's uh, was my Bible teacher when I was in eighth grade, and he's a mountain biker too, and he said, you know, I think that we can get you an e-bike from a GoFundMe. You know, he told me, like, this is really big deal, and so it sort of convinced me to do it. I yeah. got really stoked on it, yeah. then sort of chose the bike I wanted, and then the next week the new 2019 Levo came out. Okay. So this is all before the GoFundMe has been started, so we just raised, like, $500 more than planned, and ended up with that bike the money was raised in less than a week wow you know we were 95 percent in seven days yeah. <laughs> oh ho, ho, ho. little dusty Serious business. Yep. <laughs> it is amazing to see that you're back out. It feels like normal. It's mm -hmm. not normal. Yeah. It may, maybe never will be, but it just felt so good to go out yeah. on these. We did crazy climbs and crazy descents today. Mm -hmm. Too much fun and just you guys. You guys. You and your dad always seem to find the craziest, rockiest, yeah. cool, nasty trail. Doesn't matter if we're in Los Angeles or in Africa. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. 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 Send it. Oh. One more. Ah. That's ridiculous. Uh, nasty, a couple spots, but just yeah. keep going. It just gets worse and worse. Yep. Oh my god. That was epic. That was so good. <laughs> <laughs> I that. It was I like got that for an ending. Yeah, that was a great finale. Goes by in a blink of an eye, doesn't it? So what can we do now? Except for wait and see what happens to Adam. I don't think he's gonna sit around and wait. I think he's gonna keep going on with his life, keep making an impact, and he's definitely made an impact on me. Thanks for watching you guys. I'll see you on the trail.